again during the afternoon, and maybe Sunday will be the drier day as we slowly creep up towards the upper 80s. Come but, on, Sunday. Yeah, we'll update this tomorrow morning, of course. We'll good morning, everyone. Welcome to AM Weather. I'm Joan Bonnard. And a good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Carl Weiss. Heavy rains and flooding plague portions of southwestern Texas once again, much of the Atlantic seaboard, as well as the mountains and deserts of southern California. We'll take a look at all this and plus what's going on with now tropical depression Diana. First up, our U.S. series of pictures, and we start these early on Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. The front that squeezed heavy rains along the east coast the past couple of days has become stationary right along coastal waters. Rivers are out of their banks through much of New York, New Jersey, and New England as, as much as six inches of rain has fallen with this system. Tuesday morning, Montpelier, Vermont had about eight-tenths of an inch of rain with Chicopee Falls, Massachusetts picking up three-quarters of an inch. Later in the day, heavy showers and thunderstorms blew up along the southeast coast. Ping-pong ball-sized hail fell at Wilmington Island, Georgia. Rainfall totals included about two and one-tenth inches at Brunswick, Georgia, an inch and a half at Beaufort, South Carolina. A cool high-pressure system dominated the nation's midsection. Over two dozen record low temperatures for the date were set or tied from the southern Rockies into the Great Lakes. One of these records was the 38 at Marquette, Michigan. The heavy rains have subsided across portions of West Texas and New Mexico, but many roads, highways, and rivers continue flooded. The remnants of once Hurricane Diana blowing itself out this morning over the Sierra Madre north of Mexico City. Torrential rains of up to eight inches could cause some flash flooding and mudslides in the mountainous areas. The storm has weakened below tropical storm strength. Currently, strongest winds are near 35 miles per hour. Now, the motion of this system continues to be toward the west at around 10 knots, and there's a possibility that the system could re-intensify out over the Pacific. We'll keep our eye on the goings-on of Diana for the next couple of days. Here's our western series of pictures, and we start these at 2 o'clock Tuesday morning local time. The clouds trace the clockwise airflow circulating around high pressure that dominates the weather in the west. Heavy showers and thunderstorms rolled off the Sierra northwestward across northern California and through much of Oregon. Last evening, a thunderstorm pushed through the Las Vegas area, and this caused some blowing dust and blowing visibility to zero with winds around 65 miles per hour. The mountain and desert areas of southern California were soaked by heavy rains. The interior west sizzled once again Tuesday as high temperatures soared into the 90s and 100s. Six cities from Billings, Montana and Lander, Wyoming to Reno, Nevada set or tied record high temperatures for an August 7th. Both Billings and Pocatello, Idaho reached 103. Here's our early morning radar picture. We find showers and thunderstorms at the front along the Atlantic coast with tops ranging from 39,000 feet over New Hampshire to 42,000 feet near the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. These storms continue to move northward. And showers over the mountains of North Carolina near Asheville, tops of 26,000 feet, and 41,000 feet seems to be the maximum tops with the storms along the Gulf Coast. 42,000 foot tops with the storms over the central high plains. These are dropping southward, and some lingering showers and thunderstorms over portions of western Oregon, northern California, tops near... In ...rains of 10 inches or more in the mountain areas. That's going to cause some mudslides. For us... Heavy rains in parts of Virginia, North and South Carolina. Doing a little fishing. Oh, beautiful day, too. As we check our statistics, high for the day, 87 degrees. Overnight low, 68. Sunrise, 6 a.m. Tomorrow morning, sunset at 8.02. And right now, tri-state area conditions, 81 and cloudy. Northeasterly winds at 6. Our steady barometer out there, relative humidity, what's at the halfway point, 51%. Temperatures in the low 80s, although upper 70s right now out on Long Island and the shorelines of Connecticut. As you check out the satellite, well, we've got a little bit of moisture pushing up from the south, and so that's going to be bringing in more clouds late tomorrow with some showers by tomorrow night. And those showers will be hanging around. Otherwise, a little bit of a disturbance to our west again. We're going to be looking at more of the same, or partly cloudy skies to variably cloudy. Chance of afternoon showers, and it looks that way really for the next five days ahead. Tell you about that. Bring you those five days and the travel forecast right here on Channel 4. Is there enough to the east? so that we got a little bit more sunshine and the showers that were just on eastern Long Island this morning have even disappeared as well. High pressure will stay around here for tomorrow, but look down to the south. This is going to be a problem starting, let's say, late tomorrow night on into Friday as it starts to move the moisture back towards us. So enjoy portions of tomorrow because it looks like we'll be back in the threat of rain late tomorrow night and on Friday. Right now it's 78. Humidity 67 percent. That's not going anywhere. The humidity will stay around the next couple of days. Southeast wind at 7, the pressure steady. 87 the high, 68 the low. And no rain for a change. Clouds, though, are around the area, but the heaviest to the south. 
and we'll just look at partly cloudy overnight, patchy fog, 70 in the city, near 60 north and west, and upper 60s on the island. Tomorrow, a mixture of clouds and sunshine, the high around 85 degrees, a little cooler at the shore, but again, no rain tomorrow. But look at our five-day forecast. It's here on Friday, 82. Afternoon showers over the weekend, so it won't be an entire washout. Upper 80s by then, but it will be staying sticky through the period. As you can see, the low that's down in northern Florida will be tracking northeastward tomorrow night. Rain will ripple into the tri-state area again. Out west, record heat. Take a look at those red numbers. 104 at Pocatello, Idaho. How about 122 in the shade at Death Valley, California? The soil temperature, a crisp 199, four inches in the sand. Uh, Rawlin is saying, ooh, that would burn anybody's toes. Uh, chilly weather in the Midwest early today, some record lows that got down into the 50s, actually. And on radar, you can see the showers and thunderstorms all the way from southern Florida and on up into uh, New England. My, oh, my. Our Escaping it in the future, I'm afraid to tell you. We have one more dry day, though, coming up in the forecast. Today, with the sunshine, that burst through the clouds. We had a high temperature of 87 degrees. A low this morning, down to 68 degrees. And the precip, zero. Boy, that's nice to say for a change. Certainly has been an awfully wet summer. I've been getting a lot of complaints, and it's justified. It looks like this summer has just seen continuous rain. 96 degrees, the record high. That was just 10 years ago. And 1903, the record low of 54. Right now, it's pretty humid out there. 74 degrees, the humidity 71%. Wind coming in off the ocean at 5. And the barometer 30.17. And it's on the rise. And that's sort of our little brief spell of this dry weather, thanks to this little fair weather dome that's very, very close to us right now. You'll see that in just a second. Right now, you're looking at area temperatures, partly cloudy, 69 at West Nyack, also at Western Connecticut, Islip 73, 71 down at Long Beach, 76 out in Queens. We have 71 for Chatham and a little cool spot to Northwest Jersey there in the lower 60s right now. And our satellite picture, well, you'll see what's happening. We have that little dry air almost on top of us now, but look at all of these clouds from the Georgia coast moving all the way up to Pennsylvania, and you see where they're coming right towards us. So we'll be looking for that in our upcoming forecast, but not yet tonight. High pressure still in control, and that front moved just far enough off to the east today that we did see some sunshine and some drying, too. But this system is down here in Georgia, and watch what happens by tomorrow. As the system slew, moves slowly up towards the Carolinas, the moisture band starting to arrive towards Pennsylvania. So we'll be dry tomorrow, but by tomorrow night and Friday, that rain will be right on top of us. If you're going to the shore tomorrow, go for it, because by Friday, forget it. It's a mixture of clouds and sun, 75 to 80. Winds out of the southeast, 10 to 15 knots, and the seas, 1 to 3 feet. Patchy fog overnight, a few clouds, 70 in the city, near 60 north and west. Tomorrow, look for a mixture of clouds and sunshine, humid, 85 degrees, 75 to 80 at the shore. And again, here we go. Look down the road a bit. Friday, kind of showery, maybe a thunderstorm around here, and uh, about 82 degrees. Now, the weekend, don't get discouraged. It's not a complete washout that you see on the screen. It's scattered afternoon thunder showers with some sunshine, too. If you look at the radar picture, those showers are on their way up here, and we'll see them later on tonight. Right now, you can see where that front is. The front that brought us the showers on Monday, yes, that's the very same one. Low pressure down there in Georgia is creating sort of a little bubble along the front, and that's going to push the moisture and the clouds into our area for today. We'll just see increasing clouds. And then by later tonight, we'll start to see those showers. Tomorrow, as you can see, yes, we'll be in and out of the showers all day long. Finally, those showers will go away sometime later on in the afternoon on Saturday. Sunday looks like a pretty decent day, 81 for our high tomorrow. And there's a getaway forecast for the weekend. Some morning showers on Saturday, both at the mountains and the shore. Otherwise, clearing out by the afternoon. Sunday looks like a pretty decent day. 80 to 85 for the highs in the mountains. A little bit cooler at the shore. Forecast for today, increasing cloudiness. Partly sunny for the most part. 85 for the high. 75 to 80 on Long Island. And tonight, some rain developing. Oh, 7 or 8 o'clock tonight. So I don't think you'll have a commute problem. Otherwise, cloudy and 71 mid-60s to our north and west. And your five-day forecast looks like this. Some showers for tomorrow, just a pretty dreary day. But then things start to look a little better by Saturday afternoon. And Sunday will definitely be our best day, a good day to plan some outdoor activities, some beach activities, or what have you. Monday, we have another front coming through, so we may have a few showers by afternoon on Monday. Jim? I wonder why we never see those network guys standing out in the rain. <laughs> they get umbrellas. They see, somebody do. gives them So as a result, all the rain pattern, as you can see, is moving up inland across the region, 
Light showers spreading out east towards the coast. Most of the heaviest stuff following up along the Appalachians. It looks like eastern Pennsylvania and down in Virginia, they've had three, four inches of rain uh, throughout the day today. Some pretty heavy rains, but most of the heaviest stuff is all going to slide up in this pattern following my hand right up into the midsection of the country. If I could move my hand this way and it would all follow, we'd be in really good shape, but it's not going to happen. Let's take a look at what we can expect as we go along for tomorrow. Low pressure kind of moving up that frontal line. Ultimately, it's just going to be socking us in with some clouds through tonight into tomorrow. There's a good chance of us getting rain associated with that right on through. It's going to take a couple of days before this entire pattern, as you can see, which is nothing but a mess, clears out and the clearing skies back in here make their way in. So the AccuWeather forecast... could be rain and there could be a problem. Let's take a look at what's going on out there. Right now, things aren't too bad here in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, Tony Tantino and Kathy Danik are getting our video for us in Central Park, and hopefully we will not be looking at rain like that as we check out our statistics. 82 the high, the low 70. Sunrise 6.01 in our sunset tomorrow evening at 8.01. For the record, our normal high on this date was 85 degrees, our normal low 68. Record high, 1949. Record low a year ago, 1989, when it dropped back to 57 degrees. At 6 o'clock, tri-state area conditions. We've got cloudy skies, 74 degrees at Central Park. Northeasterly winds currently at 6 miles per hour, a steady barometer. Relative humidity up there in the low 70% range. 77 right now in Poughkeepsie. They've got 78 in Newburgh. 75 in Morristown, Newark, LaGuardia Airport. 78 on, out in the Hamptons. 77 in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And 78 currently in New Haven. And let's take a look at the satellite scan. This is over the last four hours, and you can look at this rain just working its way up from the south. And as it does, because most of it seems to be going to be concentrated right now in New Jersey, that's where the flash flood watch is in effect for northern New Jersey for tonight. And as we take a look at our exclusive live color radar, you'll see live where the heaviest rain is. Right now, not too bad. We've got some scattered showers in northern New Jersey. Some activity, though, also up in northern Westchester, Putnam and Dutchess County, where they really got socked two nights ago. So they're going to be watching the rain as well, and we're going to watch it for you, too. We'll bring you the five days ahead, the travel forecast for tomorrow, and a whole lot more when we come back on News 4 New York. very popular person with this upcoming forecast I have to tell you about. It is not looking so nice as we head into this upcoming weekend. The weather front that's been off and on right near the coastline is still there, and it's not moving in any rapid direction one way or the other. So the result is the moisture keeps moving northward, and now with this little weather system in Georgia likely to come up that front as well, we will be in and out of this. And especially from the city westward, even, uh, let's say, western Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, that's where the heaviest rain is going to fall. The rest of the area could still see showers, even though it may be a bit of a brightening of the sky on occasion, but again, it is not an optimistic forecast. Maybe a little better by Sunday. Right now in Central Park, it's 75 degrees humidity, 71 percent. That's not going to change either. Awfully high. Wind out of the northeast at 9, a barometer 3016 and steady. 82 was our high, 70 the low. Just a trace of rain so far. A little shot of Central Park there where it wasn't too bad for part of the day, but again, look at our satellite showing the clouds advancing northward. And more importantly, what's happening underneath the clouds? As we look at the radar now, which goes into motion from about 3.30 this afternoon, you can see the heaviest band of rain is to the west, so there is a flood watch up in the northwestern corner of New Jersey. There's another batch of rain about to come on shore towards Long Island, so again, depending on where you are is exactly how much rain will fall. We have it in the forecast overnight, maybe a thunderstorm, heavier rain to the west, 60 to, uh, 69 in the city and 60 to 65 north and west. Tomorrow, occasional rain, again, heavier to the west, about 80 degrees, the high tomorrow. And, uh, well, let's go look at our five-day forecast. That's what I wanted to show you. Tropical humidity will be around here on and through the weekend. And, again, the better day may be Sunday. We'll just have to deal with an afternoon shower, 86. Could get better, so tune in tonight for the 10 o'clock news. John Cram. All right, next till ahead, Carl has some sports for you. This, this is true. And now I just have to make an adventure weather cast, yes, I suppose, yes. right? Well, we have one for you. Let me tell you, this is a tough forecast coming up for this weekend. And uh, it depends upon exactly where you are as to what you'll see weather-wise. One of those kind of forecasts. You've seen them before. Today was one of those kind of forecasts, too. We had some showers that popped up through the area. A little sun this morning, and then things just went downhill. 82 degrees, the high, 70 the low. Just a trace of precip in the city. There was a little more in some other areas. Records today, 100 in 1949. And look at that. Where were you one year ago? How quickly we forget, huh? 57 degrees, the record low. All right, right now we're looking at a temperature of 70. Humidity's up there, of course. Wind out of the north at 5 and the pressure 3016. And it's rising a little bit right now. Uh, area temperatures are basically in the high 60s to low 70s. As you go from northwest Jersey, where a little bit more rain fell there. And that's going to be the story, I think, the next day or so. More rain will happen 
to the western areas of our viewing audience than will happen to the east. 70 at Long Beach, also in Scarsdale, western Connecticut, 71, 72 at Islip, and in the Hamptons. Mostly cloudy skies right now. Look at the radar, and you can see that we have the rain that's been basically here in Pennsylvania and the western Jersey. Now, right around the city itself, eh, nothing really too much, except for the little showers that went across central Long Island during the evening hours. And uh, it looks like this forecast will really be, again, sort of a west-to-east forecast, depending upon exactly where you are. Look at the satellite. Here's what I mean is happening. There's a little weather front that's sort of stuck along the eastern seaboard. And you can see to the east, it's actually not too bad. There's clear skies out on the eastern Long Island right now and in through parts of eastern New England. But to the west, it's much more on the cloudy side and going down into the southeast. Now, the weather map's showing the front right on top of us. So it's going to be sort of oscillating the next couple of days back and forth in the area. And most of the precip, again, should be happening to the western parts of our viewing area, but still all of us are going to be ends of the gun for occasional showers. It won't rain the entire time, but not the greatest forecast. Saturday at the shore, some showers. A little better maybe by Sunday afternoon with some sunshine coming in here. Areas of fog overnight, maybe a shower, 69 in the city and 60 to 65 north and west. Tomorrow, a few showers, again, heavier to the west, about 80 degrees will be the high, a little cooler at the shore. And then your extended forecast goes this way for Saturday, a few more showers. And again, it won't rain the entire day, but not the greatest. Maybe just peaks of sunshine, 82. And then just afternoon showers, Sunday and Monday. So it will get better. Sunday definitely looks like your better day if you're going to be making outdoor plans this weekend. But of course, this is a changing scene, so tune in tomorrow morning on Hot 97. I'll bring you an update. It's actually <laughs> bulging out like this. Now, normally, the storm systems follow along that front, just as they would a track. But what we have is an upper air trough. Now, what you can imagine is digging a little trough, a little valley in the upper atmosphere. As a result, you have developed another track right in here. And almost like a gutter, you've got that ball, that bowling ball of bad weather making its way right up the eastern seaboard. But instead of going the outside, it's going right up on the inside through the Adirondacks. Heavy rains through Virginia and uh, most of the Carolinas three inches or more in this region, and the rain is spreading eastward very slowly, which means we'll be getting more of this action later on. Now, the radar right now is showing us that most of the shower activity is around us, but it is mostly to the west and the south. You can see how it's breaking out around here, but not really making a whole lot of action here, although our humidity right now is quite high. So the AccuWeather outlook right now, overcast conditions for tomorrow morning. I'm Steve Zubrick. And a good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Carl Weiss. Soaking rains hit the eastern part of the United States while some heavy showers and thunderstorms struck the Midwest and also parts of the far west and the southeast. We'll check this all out, plus the tropics. First up will be our U.S. series of pictures, and we pick these up at 6 o'clock Thursday morning Eastern time. Low-pressure waves sliding along a stationary front over the Atlantic seaboard have drenched much of the area. Early Thursday rainfall totals included 2.8 inches at Fayetteville, North Carolina, 1.3 inches at Cherry Point and 1.7 inches at Richmond, Virginia. Roads in north central North Carolina have been underwater, and during the past two days, Zebulon, North Carolina, has had more than eight inches of rain. A short wave trough moving around the base of the main low set off some severe thunderstorms over parts of the southeast last evening. Golf ball size hail struck East Dalton and Sail Creek, Tennessee, near Chattanooga. Thunderstorm damage occurred at Dothan, Alabama, near Knoxville, Tennessee, and Anderson, South Carolina. Across the upper Midwest, the frontal passage set off more heavy showers and thunderstorms. Some of these were severe. Winds caused some damage at Ladysmith, Wisconsin. Eau Claire picked up an inch and a half of rain late in the day, and some roads were flooded in north-central Wisconsin. We're following also the remnants of what was once Hurricane Diana, and by early this morning, it's located over the southern tip of Baja, California. We'll follow this for any future development. Moving out to the west now, we have a series of pictures that starts at 7 o'clock Thursday morning. That's Pacific Daylight Time. Searing heat baked the west again on Thursday as temperatures climbed into the 90s and 100s in most interior locations. High temperature records were set at Medford, Oregon with 105, Sacramento, California at 109. We see the clouds tracing the circulation around the high pressure system that extends deep into the atmosphere. Locally heavy showers and thunderstorms bubbled up in the heat. A tornado touched out at Fallon, Nevada and heavy rains and some lightning struck the Las Vegas area. More low clouds, we can see once again, move into the Oregon and California coast during the nighttime hours. Well, now we'll move eastward, take a look at the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean with a series of images that starts at 10 o'clock Thursday morning Eastern time. 
A couple of tropical waves were following, one moving through the Antilles, another one through Central America, and disappearing off the horizon of our image is Tropical Storm Edward. At 6 o'clock this morning, he was located at 39.9 north, 26.5 west. That's about 95 miles north-northeast of Tercera in the Azores, moving to the northeast at around 5 knots. Here's our early morning radar image, and we find some showers and thunderstorms lingering.